So I've been seeing a lot of people talk about 3080, and I remember there was a lot of rumors of people saying, that fan on the back, it's gonna make my CPU run hot. What a stupid design. So I figured today we'd go ahead and test that. Yes, I am well aware that Steve already made his video with his thermal imaging showing the airflow pattern and how even he was surprised it wasn't very conical, like very much of a, of, a, of a sharp tunnel. But unfortunately, he didn't end that video with a practical test by actually testing the temperatures in a system. But I can tell you, I've already tested this. I put this inside my Threadripper system. This is my system here at the studio that I use that mostly I pay World of Warships on while Phil is working. And I tested for two hours straight what temperatures were like with this. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna do an AB comparison, just giving you another point of source of info to use with our hot CPU that's on air cooled or air cooling, which is kind of funny because that's the only air cooled CPU that I have. And we're gonna see whether or not with two cards with the same identical TDP with two different cooler types actually affect CPU temperature once and for all. So we need a baseline test. Now, now, so here's the thing. Although the Founders Edition is a custom PCB in the EVGA 3080 XT3 PX1, QRST, U, V, W, X, Y, whatever, I'm probably sure I did the alphabet wrong, um, is also a custom PCB, not referenced as far as I know, but it uses a traditional style blower. And that means that air is gonna come out the back, presumably some through those tiny little holes. Uh, fins this way towards the glass, that way towards the motherboard, some may be going that way towards the outside of the case, kind of coming out in all four directions. So that'll give us a very good AB comparison because it's still a 3080 that uses 350 watts with the same boost tables and all that sort of stuff. So had I done this with a 2080 Ti, you could be like, well, the temp differences are because it's a not a, as hot of a card. 250 to 290 or 300 watts, depending on the custom variants. At least this way, they are as apples to apples as they can be. So let's go ahead and get this guy in there. So the system that I'm using right here is my Threadripper 3960X, because you have the 70. So that means this is the 24 core, I believe 24 core 48 thread variant. Bottom line is it's not overclocked or anything like that. It's just out of the box because I'm on the air cooler, but it does have the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro for, for the TR4 obviously. And why does EVGA always have to have their plugs inverted backwards from everybody else? But with the standard uh, card in here, you can see air is gonna come out this way and probably bounce against the glass and a lot of them make it this way, but it's going to, the heat is going to generate heat inside of the case. So the thing that people are concerned about is with the rear fan pointing up and blowing through the card that this fan is gonna suck it in. There's a fan right here in the middle too. And it's just gonna raise the temps in your system unnecessarily. We lock the CPU cooler to 75%. We lock the case fans to 60%. Uh, percent, and we lock the GPU fans to 65%. We need to control the environment without letting things ramp up. Otherwise we can't measure what the differences are. Our air conditioner here in the studio is keeping things at 71 degrees Fahrenheit. That's whatever this is in Celsius, and we can flick that away. So we're using superposition benchmark for this test, as I already said, at 1080p custom. Yeah, I know people hear 1080p, that's not hard. But 1080p extreme, it's extremely difficult to run. It's way harder than 4K optimized on this. And so we're gonna be running it with A to 64 going, which is doing all of our CPU monitoring, and then MSI Afterburner is gonna be displaying it in its OSD or on-screen display for us. And then I'm using game mode and not benchmark because what game mode will do is it will allow me to find a spot in the room where it's under extreme load or at least where I can make sure it's at the most usage and I think 98% is about as high as we're gonna see it go. Um, and then just leave it static because although people don't sit there in their games and just stare at the corner like this. But you can see now our FPS is constant our GPU percentage is at 97. It bounces between 96 and 97. Our GPU temp is climbing. This is our CPU temp right here. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna let this go for, I think 15 minutes seems like a good round number. All right, so we're about 15 minutes in. Actually, it would have just ended. Um, so here's where we equalize. Our GPU went as high as 82C. Remember, we're not letting the fans ramp up. We're, we've kept them static at 50, 65% and I have a feeling with how cool and quiet these fans are, I have a feeling that it would have ramped up higher than that. But because everything is static, the chassis fans can't go up, the CPU fan can't go up, 
we pretty much equalize at about 52C on the CPU. Now, some of you might look at that and go, wow, you started at 40 degrees and now you're up to 52. Clearly the graphics card's causing heat. Well, yeah, we know that the graphics card's a heat source in here and it's not even the one that's in question about blowing the hot air up. So this is our baseline. We now wanna know if with this graphics card, if our CPU is gonna get any hotter than that. But first, there's another test I wanna run real quick. I want to go ahead and unchoke this graphics card and case by taking off the front panel. Wow, I felt heat come this way considering the air is blowing that way. Um, we all know the H710i, as Steve called it, is a brute force method of trying to keep things cool. But I bet you right now, if I let this run for 10 minutes with the front panel open, both the CPU and the GPU will come down as a whole. In fact, the GPU is already starting to come down. It's now at 81 instead of 82. So I'm gonna let this run for 10 minutes and see what our, uh, our temp drops down to after the 15 minute run and then 10 minutes of an open front panel. There's no filter here, it's just open. I could stick my finger in the fan if I wanted to, ah, like that. So it's, it's wide open. All right, so it's been 10 minutes now with the front panel off and you can see, whoa, I moved it, no. Okay, you can see that our CPU temp is at 49C, 46C, it was actually at 44, there it is, um, 43. And our GPU went from 82 down to 78. Now some might look at that and go, well, clearly the GPU temp coming down lower the CPU temp. What if I told you the CPU temp came down before the GPU temp? The CPU temp came down almost instantly after opening the front of this case. The GPU temp took quite a while to come down. Fun fact, the GPU under load is a lot harder to pull the temperature down than it is to have it not get to that higher number to begin with. Jay, what do you mean? Trying to pull it down from 82 to 78 is a lot harder than letting the fan start uh, or letting the GPU start with a higher percentage fan and run at a cooler temperature. So if I were to stop the test right now with the front open like this, let everything cool off and do it again, it probably won't get to 78. It's much harder to get rid of that energy than letting the energy form to begin with. We're gonna shut this down. We're gonna throw in our 3080 Founders Edition. I have a prediction that nothing is gonna change at all for the CPU. I feel the CPU temperatures are gonna be exactly what we just saw. I think people are severely blowing out of proportion, that fan, and what's gonna happen. If anything, I feel like this might help our situation because we're gonna be blowing air now directly on our RAM, which is not normally getting any airflow right now. Because as you can see, our fan is in front of the RAM, and then this middle fan is blowing air out. So we actually have some cooling, ooh, Wow, that rear, that rear ram right there, holy cow. Okay, that was not expected. Phil, feel this. I touched the very back one. That's cool. Whoa, that's ah. hot. <laughs> it is hot. It's like, why is, the, why is the back ram so hot? Probably because it's close to the VRM right there in that little heat sink. Now you can see why I keep telling people having airflow over something that's hot, that has no airflow, is better than nothing, even if the air is warm, which is exactly what I think we're gonna observe here. Jay, the cooler is what's heating it up. No, that's far hotter than the air that's coming through this cooler. You, let's just throw a number out there. You can't take 35C air, blow it on something, have the thing it's blowing on go hotter than the temp of the thing it's blowing at it. You can't have 35 air heat something up to 50. Doesn't work that way. Piece of stuff. Why didn't you put a space between these slots? It's so stupid. Ow. Just jam my fingernail, ah! So while we're waiting for the system to boot up here, let's go and take a look at the layout of the 3080. So given the size of our Be Quiet cooler here, you can see the fan is actually farther to the front than where the fan on the GPU is. So only part of the GPU fan has a chance of making it into the intake of the CPU right there, because remember the air is going this way. I can tell you right now though, given the position of the RAM right there, that that air is blowing directly on that RAM, which now makes me wish the front fan was a pass through too, given what I just felt with that last RAM stick. I think the real disaster here is these cables, honestly. But oh. yeah, so anyway, same thing. We're gonna run 15 minutes, we'll show you the temps, take out the front panel, 10 minutes without it, see what they come down to, and then that will, uh, will obviously paint us a pretty good picture here. So we just passed 15 minutes. Our GPU is 15C colder at the same load. I believe we're holding a little bit higher clocks and our, our FPS is also the same. So look at this though. We're 3C colder on the CPU with the exact same test in the exact same room, 71 degrees Fahrenheit still. All of the fan speeds are still exactly the same. 
front cover is on. Yeah, front cover is on. So we started talking about this for a second, and I was like, wow, I, I expected to show people there wasn't going to be any change. I didn't expect to come back and say, hey, guys, everything's running cooler. The GPU, it's clear that the FE cooler with the massive heat sinks on it, the, the dual fan, the single blower fan, and the pass-through fan are doing something. I have two theories as to why the CPU is colder. I feel like some of that air blowing through onto the heat sink, like I said, is assisting in cooling. Because we know that we're causing a situation here on purpose where not as much airflow can get through the front of the case as we would like. But I feel like the air that is coming through the cooler hitting the, the, the shroud and the fins is offering some level of cooling. And then it dawned on me, hey Jay, you're stupid. It had nothing to do with this, it just dawned on me that I'm stupid. But I realized at that point, that blower fan is taking a lot of the heat out of the case. Whereas the triple fans like this, or even the double fans, all of this hot air is making itself into the case. So the top fans and the rear fan have a much harder job at exhausting that hot air. And where does that hot air that's below the CPU have to go? up through the CPU. So that means the CPU cooler as a, as a whole is gonna be grabbing a lot of that hot air and sucking it through as, this, as the GPU is heating up the entire chassis. So that blower fan is actually doing a, uh, a significant amount of work at keeping the overall chassis temperature lower. So I, I mean, the whole time I've been sitting here explaining it to you, nothing's changed. It's, it's locked out. It's not getting any worse. So now we're gonna see what happens it's so violent. Now we're going to see what happens if we take the front off. And I bet you we could see this in real time. Let's just point the camera here. I bet you in real time we'll see just how fast these temperatures can start improving in terms of bringing down the temps. And I told you in the last clip, the CPU temp came down before the GPU. And what that tells me, at least in our last clip, is the fact that the CPU was more affected by your case airflow than the GPU, obviously. Otherwise, if they came down together, one could argue that the colder GPU uh, which again, the GPU didn't even come, and there's that spike I'm talking about, something happening in the background with the OS, that's gonna come right back down. Something's loading, pinging a server, updating, I'm not sure. Give it a sec, there it goes. See, it came back down. Who knows what it's doing? Windows updates are paused, but there we go. So we already lost yeah, the fact that it even hit 47 for a second, but look, we've lost two C, back up. It's funny, as things come down, it kind of fluctuates as it bounces between those different uh, sensor points, see now we're solid in the 65, now we're going from 48 down to 47. You'll see that trigger itself again here in a sec. But that's just in the minute or so I've been talking to you since I took that front panel off, you can see the temps already starting to come down. All right, 10 minutes left. Siri set a timer for 10 minutes. We'll see what it equalizes at, but I think it's pretty obvious now that uh, the, the, it's been debunked. It is completely bogus that the blower style cooler or whatever you want to call this, this FE cooler, it's going to have any sort of negative impact on your system. In fact, compared to a comparable card that was also set at a 350 watt TDP limit for this test to make sure one card wasn't boosting higher than the other, you can see the FE actually kept higher boost clocks, it kept better temperatures, and it did not heat up our system as a whole because this type of cooler, which is very traditional now these days, does increase the internal temperatures of your system. It's also why the blower style cooler was something I always recommended in small form factor cases where you didn't have adequate airflow because the only thing that was responsible for keeping this card cool was the air it was exhausting or through its, its cooler, pulling in here and exhausting there. It didn't exhaust that hot air into the chassis. Some of it would leak and bleed out some of the edges and there was a little bit of radiant back heat, uh, heat coming off the back plate but as a whole, this is a much better solution for something like the low-key Ghost uh, S1 case, uh, maybe an N case uh, N1, stuff like that, where you don't have a whole lot of chassis fans. Although these sound like hair dryers, they are the best thermal solution for a case like that. It's, if you put a triple fan like this into a small like Ghost S1 type case, you'll find this probably will thermal throttle simply because the case can't handle exhausting the heat, whereas this actually does a better job of it. And we're only a couple minutes now into that 10 minutes and you can see we've already come down to 64C and 45C on the CPU. What's funny about that is the fact that because our CPU is not under any sort of significant load, it's probably only at like 10, 15% load while running this test at all. Our GPU being maxed out, these hot temperatures are not affecting our CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. There is no point to let this test go any longer because the point has been proven. But Jay, what about the 3090? That's clearly a hotter card. 
No, actually the 3090 runs cooler than the 3080 in all of our tests because the cooler is so overbuilt. It's 30 watt TDP higher than the FE3080. However, the cooler is definitely built greater than that 30 watt difference. It can handle it enough to where the actual load temperatures of the 3090 are lower than the 3080 across the board. And as such, you're gonna see the same thing we just explained right here happening even more efficiently because you have a bigger 100, what was it 110 millimeter fan? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's 110 millimeter fans on there. So you have a bigger fan blowing air up into the CPU, like I just said, and an even bigger fan in the front blowing air out of the case, never making it into the internal volume of the, of the air. So with that said, share this video with anyone that you see commenting, that kind of cooler is going to just heat up your CPU because it's bogus, it's ignorant, it's incorrect. So if you're new around here and you've followed our channel or found us because of all the 30 series hype, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't hurt for long. You'll get over it quickly, I promise. But we're sure to bring you more content like this where we do crazy experiments and stuff. And with the RIPGN series being revived, which is basically where Steve and I go back and forth over taking control of the leaderboard and who can have a faster setup, uh, it usually gets pretty out of control and it's worth watching. And Steve and I have already agreed, RIPGN and RIPJ, it's on. But not with this card, it's way too slow.